Alrighty, so today we're going to be talking about net ionic equations, which is essentially breaking everything that we've been talking about, about equations, both single and double displacement, breaking those down. So, what the AU means. In writing single and double displacement reactions, we've been utilizing the phase labels, um, solid, liquid, gas, and especially the phase label of aqueous, or AQ. And we've said that these are really important, especially in double displacement reactions where we know our solubility rules, we know if things are going to be aqueous, solid, liquid, or gas. Now remember, if something is soluble, that means that it is dissolvable in water. And that means that it is going to be an aqueous solution, or AQ. So if something is soluble, it's aqueous. If it is insoluble, it's going to be a solid. It will not dissolve in water. But when things, when we say that something is soluble, what we really mean is that it will break apart into its constituent ions, or its base ions, when put in water. So for example, NaCl, sodium chloride, which is table salt, is soluble in water. And what happens to it when it dissolves in water is that the Na and the Cl break apart, and they become Na plus and Cl minus. And those ions float around in the water. So that's what it means to be an aqueous solution. And we've focused primarily on phase labels with double displacement reactions. I may give you a question here or there about single displacement, and so I'll go over an example um, later on tonight. So the aqueous is important label because it indicates, again, that the substance has been dissolved in water. And when they dissolve in water, like I said, they are soluble and they break up into their ions. This means that chemical reaction equations that we've been writing so far would actually more accurately be written with the substances broken apart into their ions. So let's take a look. So we're going to do an example of a double displacement first. So writing reactions there in their ionic form turns this reaction of lead to nitrate plus potassium iodide becoming potassium nitrate and lead to iodide where you'll notice that potassium to nitrate, sorry, lead to nitrate, potassium iodide, and potassium nitrate are all aqueous solutions, whereas lead to iodide is a solid or insoluble. So when we write this as an ionic reaction or an ionic equation, we're going to need to break apart our three aqueous substances. And so what they're going to become is the lead to nitrate is going to become lead two plus ion and nitrate. And so what it becomes is something like this, where my lead 2 nitrate becomes lead 2 plus aqueous, where we still keep those phase labels. Those phase labels are still essential. And then the nitrate here, instead of writing nitrate as with the subscript 2, since we've broken it up into the ionic equation, we write the 2 in front to indicate that there are two nitrate NO3 1 minus aqueous ions. We then take the potassium iodide, becomes 2K two, two, two plus ions, and that 2 carries on into the entire compound of 2 iodine minus 1 minus ions. And then the potassium nitrate becomes 2K plus aqueous ions and 2 nitrate 1 minus aqueous ions. And then you'll notice that the lead 2 iodide stays the same. The only things that are broken apart are aqueous solutions. Solids, liquids, and gases stay as they are. They stay as compounds. Okay, so again, just highlighting that anything that is aqueous is broken apart into its ions. Anything that is not aqueous, a solid, a liquid, or a gas, is left as a compound. All right, so let's do an example, actually. I'd really like you to do this example. So I have given you an equation of KOH plus HNO3 making H2O and potassium nitrate, or KNO3. And I want you to figure out how to write this as an ionic equation. Now the first thing that you should do is of course indicate phase labels so that we know which ones are aqueous and which ones are not aqueous so we know which ones need to break apart and which ones don't. Now in order to do this you're going to need to break out that good old fashioned solubility rules table and I'm doing that right now. So you should as well. Now, if you look at potassium hydroxide, or KOH, if we look at the solubility rules, hydroxide says that it is insoluble except when combined with group one ions. 
and calcium, barium, strontium, or ammonium. Now potassium is a group one ion. So this KOH is gonna be aqueous. Now HNO3, if we look at solubility rules, all nitrates are soluble, no exceptions. So HNO3 or nitric acid is going to be soluble or aqueous. Water we know to be one of our three known liquids, so that's gonna be liquid. And potassium nitrate, again, all nitrates are soluble, no exceptions. So looking then at this, we're gonna have to break apart KOH, HNO3, and KNO3 into the associated ions, and water's gonna stay the same. So when we write our ionic equation, we're gonna break those apart. So K and OH separates out, H and, and NO3 separates into H and NO3, K and NO3 separates out into K and NO3, and then water stays the same. Now you'll notice when I do this separation into ions, that I leave my polyatomics as is. I don't break up my hydroxide into O2 minus and H1 plus, and I don't break up my nitrate into something a lot smaller. I leave my polyatomics as they are. They are polyatomic ions. They are ions in and of themselves as a group, okay? So they don't need to be broken up any further. Now this, of course, is not an adequate ionic equation. I have no phase labels, I have no charges, I have nothing. So let's make sure that we can make it right. So if we put in our phase labels, potassium and hydroxide are both still aqueous. Hydrogen and the nitrate are both still aqueous. Same with the potassium and the nitrate, and that liquid carries down. So if it was an aqueous compound, it becomes aqueous ions. Now in order to indicate that these are ions, we still need to include their charge, which we should be able to find either on the periodic table or based on our knowledge of polyatomics. So potassium is found in group one, it's a one plus. Hydroxide is found in group two, or sorry, hydroxide is a polyatomic, which we know, and we know it to be a one minus. Hydrogen is also found in group one, so it's a one plus. And nitrate is a polyatomic, which we know to be one minus. So potassium is still one plus, and nitrate is still one minus. That is an acceptable ionic equation, okay? All right, so let's look at them as single displacement reactions. Now, a single displacement reaction starts out with one metal plus a compound, and if it is a reaction that is going to go based on the activity series, then the metals switch places. Now, the thing to remember here um, is that the way that this happens is that the copper is a solid initially, and the compound is an aqueous compound. And when they switch, the metal that was associated with the compound actually precipitates out. It becomes solid in, in um, the solution. And the solution that was solid becomes aqueous. So if you take a look, I've got a note here that explains it. If a metal is a solid as a reactant, it becomes aqueous as a product. And if it is aqueous as a reactant, it becomes solid as a product. Now, of course, this is only if the reaction is going to occur but if it does occur, it's this, the lone metal starts out as solid and becomes aqueous. The compound metal starts out as aqueous and becomes solid. Okay? And so we're going to, again, break up any aqueous compounds but leave any solids, liquids, and gases. So our silver 1 nitrate and copper 2 nitrate are both going to be broken apart into copper solid plus 2 Ag plus aqueous plus 2 NO3 minus aqueous, making 2 Ag solid plus CO2 plus plus 2 NO3 1 minus. All right, I want you guys to have a go. Um, where the aqueous, sorry, aqueous reactants products are broken up to ions and solid reactants products are left to solids. All right, I want you guys to do this example. Lithium plus lead 2 nitrate, making lithium nitrate and lead. So first of all, I want you to figure out it, are our compounds soluble or not. So if you look at nitrates, nitrates are all soluble, no exception. So lead nitrate would be aqueous as well as lithium nitrate. That would mean that this lithium and this lead are going to be solid because they're by themselves and that was our rule is that the um, metals that are by themselves are solids. So if we put in our phase labels, oops, sorry, we're going to balance it first. Um, I forgot which order I went here. This, is, this was not a balanced reaction. We had one nitrate over here, or sorry, two nitrates here and one over here. So we need to balance it first, which means we're gonna put it at two here, which means we need to change our lithium to two. 
So once we balanced it, we're going to put in our phase labels. Lithium is going to be solid. Lead nitrate is going to be aqueous. Lithium nitrate is aqueous. And this lead is going to be solid. Now, if we break this apart, that means that the lead 2 nitrate and the lithium nitrate are both going to be broken up into ions. So we've got lithium, lead, nitrate, lithium, nitrate, and lead. And these are all broken up into their ions. But again, this is not balanced. We haven't carried down any 2s. So we're going to put a 2 in front of the lithium, a 2 in front of our nitrate based on this 2 right here, a 2 in front of the lithium, and a 2 in front of the nitrate based on this 2. And now we need to enclose our phase labels. Lithium was solid on the reactant side, so it stays solid on the reactant side, whereas the lead and the nitrate were both aqueous. Lithium becomes aqueous on the product side, same with the nitrate, but the lead becomes solid on the product side. And again, we need to include charges. It is not a it is not a correct ionic equation without charges. You need to indicate ions. Ions have charge. So we're going to put in lead is 2 plus, nitrate is 1 minus, lithium is 1 plus, and nitrate is 1 minus. Again, nitrate is 1 minus based on the polyatomic ions. Lithium is a 1 plus based on the periodic table. And lead we know to be 2 plus because it took two nitrates to balance out the lead to make our neutral compound. Two 1 minuses means that you needed to have a 2 plus. All right, how do you guys feel about that? I hope you feel good. Come ask me with questions tomorrow if you don't. So let's talk about spectator ions. Some of the ions you may have noticed in this undergo no change during the reaction, meaning that they start out as ions and end up as ions, experiencing no change in phase. Now, these are important ions. They are participating in so much as that they are there in the reaction, but they're not actually participating in the reaction. So these ions are called spectator ions, as they do not participate in the reaction directly, but rather are just present during the reaction. They're like spectators at a sporting event. They watch, they do not interact. To simplify the equations then, spectator ions are removed to make net ionic reactions, or ionic reactions that show just what actually experiences a change. Where net refers to just the ions undergoing change. Okay? So let's see what that means. So if we look back at our first double displacement reaction where we had K plus OH minus and H plus and NO3 minus becoming K plus and NO3 minus and H2O. You'll notice that we have some repeaters on the stand here. K plus and NO3 minus both appear as ions on the reactant and the product side. So they did not actually experience or undergo change during the reaction, which means that they were spectator ions. So we're going to get rid of them. Okay. And we're going to write our net ionic reaction as OH plus H becoming H2O. All right. Where we need to then still carry down our phase labels and our charges. So aqueous and liquid and our charges go up there. And so this shows you, this is still a balanced reaction. You should always, net ionic reactions are still balanced. It's just that we're simplifying them and just showing the things that are undergoing a change. Or if we look at our single displacement reactions, we've got to balance it first and put in our charges. So if we look at this, the things that don't undergo change, there's only one thing. It's the two nitrate ions. Okay, that appear on both sides. So we're going to get rid of those. And then our net ionic reaction becomes lithium plus lead making lithium plus lead. But we need to indicate, like right now, it doesn't look like anything has changed. So we need to indicate what has changed. We need to keep our chart our balancing. But we need to indicate that lithium goes from solid to aqueous and lead goes from aqueous to solid. And so we're going to need to indicate our phases and our charges. So again, these reactions should still be balanced and they should still make sense and have phase labels and charges. So we're going to do some practicing with this tomorrow. Um, net ionic equations are nicer for us to work with because it simplifies everything. You can tell, I mean, this is a pretty simple um, double displacement reaction, but you can tell that the more complicated are ions get or compounds get, the harder it is going to be to keep track of everything. And so just cutting it down to things that actually experience a change can be really helpful. 
So uh, we will talk about this next time. Thanks, guys.